What's happening? What's happening? This is your boy Rukma here. Guys, how you doing? Guys, I'm going to give you guys my review, my thoughts and opinion on this year's SummerSlam. And I'm just going to say from the start, I'll say that this SummerSlam was pretty decent, but I will get to it once I go through these matches. All right, so the first match, I was at I was honestly surprised that they, that they didn't was that WWE didn't put the Slim Jim Battle Royale as the opener, but instead they had Logan Paul and Ricochet. Logan Paul and Ricochet, they'll be the first ones to fight. So I was like, okay, hopefully this match is good. Hopefully Ricochet wins. And I'm gonna be honest, guys. When I was, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. There was like certain moves that that they were happening between them two that they were like kind of sloppy bruh you know what I'm saying like I don't understand like they need training dude they need really training but anyway putting that to the side I was rooting for um ricochet throughout the whole match dude and I ain't gonna lie but it was kind of intense but until I don't know who that dude was to hand them that brass knuckles and this man just hit freaking Ricochet right there, bruh. In front of the ref. How the heck the ref then... Yo, the ref literally ducked. Like, oh, shoot. Bro, I knew the ref knew that he put them brass knuckles, dude. And this man literally stole a win, dude. That match, for me, was trash, bruh. Logan Paul literally freaking buries Ricochet, dude. And he doesn't even win like regular, bruh. This man literally had to use a whole freaking weapon, dude, to win. Imagine having to use brass knuckles against Ricochet, dude. Imagine having to cheat against Rick against Ricochet, dude. In order for you to win. So so far, that match for the opener. I was disappointed. Trash. Okay, so the second match. We had the Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes match. Dude, this match was honestly like my favorite match, dude. I liked it. it. Um, at first, Brock Lesnar was just looking. Brock Lesnar, how he looked, he was just looking like he was playing with his food. You know what I'm saying? Like, this man was doing suplexes on Cody after suplexes, dude. This man literally hit him with like one F5. This man hit him with another F5. The second F5 literally had the commentary table broken. But the thing that was so funny was it literally broke like a sec, like five seconds late, bro. Like when he landed on top of that table, it just randomly collapsed to pieces. Like it didn't even like collapse when Cody Rose literally hit the, the table. It just waited for like a second and the table just like Psh! And you just hear freaking Brock Lesnar just yelling at him Save yourself Cody Save yourself So this man kept on pushing him out the ring Pushing him out the ring And I'm like oh my goodness Cody Come on man get up bro Come on get this bro get this But at first Cody was going into him dude He was hitting after disaster kicks After disaster kicks But then that's if y'all know how Brock Lesnar is dude and then when Cody Rose had to use was hold on when Cody was about to do the crossroads Brock Lesnar literally reversed it and made it into a freaking Kimura lock I'm like oh man don't tell me dude and then somehow I don't know how he did it Cody Rhodes got out of there dude he he literally put a hand on the rope bruh I'm like yes so this man Cody was on going on fire and all that dude. And I'm like, hold on. Why is Cody Rose grabbing the steel steps? And this man literally hits Brock Lesnar, dude. I'm like, wait, so this match has a is this match a stipulation or this is a normal match because isn't Cody Rose gonna get um disqualified? Bro, that's what I'm saying, dude. Was the referees doing paying attention? at their matches today because me 
I like Cody Rhodes. That was my favorite match. But yo, when I saw that, bro, I was like, how was that not a disqualification, dude? Like, what the freak? But overall, Cody hit him with like three freaking crossroads and literally won, dude. I was so freaking hype, even though that referee didn't caught that. That was the second time the referee missed. Okay. So the third match was the Slim Jim's Battle Royale. Bro, that joint was so predictable. I'm glad I got this in my prediction, right? My second time. LA Knight, bro. Your boy LA Knight finally got the crowd going crazy, dude. Like when the camera would like will beam towards like the the audience. Bro, you see like mad people using um having LA Knight shirts, bro. Like that jump was packed of his people, bro. But then when I saw that Omos was going to be in it last minute, I'm like, dude, don't tell me he's going to be the one to win. But nah, bro, they freaking work together, bro. They got that giant dude out, LA Knight, easy dub, dude. But then freaking Karrion Cross literally did freaking AJ Styles dirty. So you already know they're going to have a future food feud with one another, bro. Um, so yeah, bro, that, that Royal Rumble match, I'll give it to WWE. It was good. LA Knight won, got the crowd going crazy. So what was the, the, the other match? Oh yeah, it was the Ronda Rousey versus the Shayna Blazler. To be honest, this match, eh, it was a sleeper, dude. I didn't hardly care for this match. I was, I can't believe, literally when Shayna Blazer literally freaking put her in that sleeping hole, she just passed out immediately. Like she was trying to fight for a little bit and she was just like, nah, go ahead, just win me, please. Like, bruh, and then, yo, compare the energy towards the Slim Jim Royal Rumble to that match, dude, the crowd was just like, not into it, dude. Like, you could tell nobody cared about that match, bruh. Yeah, bro, that match was trash. So then we finally got the Guther versus Drew McIntyre, bro, for the Intercontinental Championship belt. Dude, when they were hitting each other with the chops after chops after chop. When they were hitting each other with the chops after chops, bro, they were leaving marks on one another, dude. Bro, freaking Drew McIntyre was like beating on him, bro. And then, dude, this man was literally pushing him down, bro. Like, I never seen Guta get dropped like that. I don't even know. I don't even remember when he got dropped like that, dude. Like, Drew McIntyre was putting in the work on him, dude. And then freaking Guta, bro, literally grabs the ropes. Have Drew McIntyre literally hit his power part. Does his signature. Hits him up with a power bomb. Sad to see, bruh. Guter retained the title, dude. I honestly thought that, that Drew McIntyre was going to win. Oh, man. I was I was kind of sad. Not like sad in tears, but I was like, dang. So, what, a, what, what, what other match was it? Oh, yeah. I think it was the Seth Rollins and Finn Balor match. This match was kind of decent. I ain't going to lie. But then when I saw like the Judgment Day members come in, and I'm like, oh no, don't tell me they're gonna be doing something, bruh. This match was going so well until they gotta show up. But nah, dude. Yo, Seth Rollins held his own, dude. And then Damien just coming out with the briefcase. I might cash it in. I might cash it in. Bruh, this man was literally about to hand his briefcase to Finn Balor. Like, bruh, what are you. What the heck is this? And then, bro, you see Finn Balor with his, like, mouth busted open, dude. I'm like, oof, dang. It's crazy, dude. And then freaking Seth Rollins literally wins with a curb stomp because <laughs> the judgment, they try to cheat, and yet they failed. That is so funny to me. How come in that freaking pay-per-view events, they want to fail, but in regular events, whether it's Raw or SmackDown... Sometimes they cheat was successful, you know what I'm saying? Like that, it's just freaking weird and funny. But anyway, Seth Rollins retains. I honestly thought that um, Damian Priest was just gonna come out and cash it in and become the champion, but which is another like a tease, like always. 
And then we had the triple threat match between the ladies. It was Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair, um, Asuka. Dude, this match was like kind of good, bro. The freaking ladies were coming, were, was like beating it, beating each other up. Bam, 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 bam. And then, yo, freaking, how freaking Charlotte Fair literally just lift up Bianca Belair and literally just clang, bro, onto that steel steps. Yo, how she like buck her, it looked like she buckled her like her knee, dude. I'm like, dang. And then they was like trying to like make her like how you say like get her out of the ring. Nah, she literally came back, bro. She wanted to fight. I don't know how she had that courage to literally lift up, um, lift up. Um, I forgot who she lift up. Either Charlotte Flair or I forgot who she did. And then she tried to hit the KOD. But then um, Charlotte Flair did like the figure four way lock, and then Oscar tried to come in. Literally sprays the freaking mist towards Charlotte, and Bianca literally just grapples her and just does like a freaking pin move. Bianca is champion, but once you hear that Aero Sky music, I'm like, oh, yo, is this gonna happen for real? Yo, you just see freaking Aero Sky, bro, and Bailey. Bailey freaking just hits Charlotte Flair with the briefcase. And then freaking, I think she hits um, Asuka as well. And I'm like, yo, this is happening, bro. And then she was like, I'm cashing it in. I'm cashing it in. I was like, oh, shoot. Dang, bro. When she did her move, bro, I'm like, dang, what a successful cash in, dude. I'm like, dang, bro. Why they couldn't do that with Damian Priest? But anyway, that was shocking. I give it to the WWE. That was that had to be like the only shocking moment of the of the event. And then what else, bruh? The main event, bro. <laughs> Me, I'm not gonna complain about Roman Reigns, bro, because at this point, should we need me be mad at this dude? Like we should already know what he's capable of, dude. Always gotta be cheating, like always. Always using solo. And then, bro, the most stupidest ending I've seen in a WWE match, dude. Literally, Jimmy J. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy Uso literally comes back and literally attacks Jay Uso. And that's how he literally lost the match. Dude, when I saw that, bro, I'm like, you know what? I'm not even mad at this point. I'm just numb. Like, the fact how Roman Reigns keeps on being champion, he just keeps on having the same type of energy of matches, dude. That match was so freaking boring, because, dude, the whole time Roman Reigns was just taunting. Literally just taunting, dude. I don't... Yo, that match was just kind of like a waste of time for me, dude. Like, and then for... For Jimmy... From Jimmy Uso just to attack Jay, bro. For me, that's so freaking retarded, bro. Like, didn't, didn't we already had... Didn't WWE already did something with brother and brother? With Kane and The Undertaker? Now they're going to be doing the same thing with Jimmy and Jay, dude. That drum was so freaking retarded, dude. Yeah, bro. So, overall, SummerSlam, it was pretty decent. But the... But the opener was trash. The Shayna Baszler match was kind of garbage. And that main event was just stupid. Like, literally retarded, dude. I don't know who enjoyed that. That joint was so freaking stupid. Anyway, if I had to give this a rating, Summer Sun of this year, I'll give it like a C- minus to a D+. Plus. D+, plus to a C-. minus. Anyway, guys, what you guys think about Summer Sun this year? Let's have a comp. Comment down below what you thought of. Share with your friends and family. Um, subscribe if you're new. And yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. So, yep. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't mind the noises in the background if you hear it. Um, yep. <sighs> yeah, man. SummerSlam was just... It was alright. Anyway, guys, this is your boy Rickma. Rickma signing off. Peace. God bless.